No Bullshit Guide on How to Lose Belly Fat. Let's get right into it. Step one, or rather option one, is going to be the amount of times that you eat in a single day. Whether that be two meals, five meals, three meals, four meals, whatever the case may be for you, you should only be eating when you are hungry. Let me repeat that. Only eat a meal when you are hungry. The common belief that you need to eat a meal as soon as you wake up, and then another one at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, and then another one at 6 o'clock, this is bullshit. There's no science to prove that this helps people. And you should really only be eating, like I said before, when you're actually hungry. An example of this would be, what if you had a late dinner the night before, then you have to wake up pretty early for work, and then you're eating another meal around six, seven o'clock in the morning when you just ate dinner at maybe 8 p.m. the night before, you're not gonna feel very hungry if you're eating good, real high quality food the night before, and then you have to force feed yourself another meal early on the next morning. There have been times when I ate dinner around 7 p.m., went to bed around 11, 12 o'clock-ish, and then woke up and I wasn't even hungry until the afternoon, like 12 o'clock. You need to wait till you're actually hungry to eat, because guess what? Then you're gonna be able to put down more food, you're gonna be able to eat a lot more protein, and you're gonna be able to get all your nutrients in. And many people eat when they're not even actually hungry. They're just bored. Maybe they're like wandering around the house. They're just watching TV. This is called bored eating and it actually affects a lot more people than you probably know. And my solution to this would just be drink a lot more water throughout the day than you're drinking right now. I would recommend at least, at least one gallon of water per day. You need to also understand that after every single meal you eat and also as the day goes on, your testosterone levels drop. Now, I'm not recommending every single person to do a thing like intermittent fasting, but it has helped me a ton when it comes to burning body fat throughout the morning when I'm not eating and also just feeling less lethargic. And the science behind fasting is very simple. It's just that the longer your fasting window is, the more body fat you're going to burn. It has also been proven that any type of fasting window actually increases your LDL levels. And that's not a bad thing. Okay. I'll get into this much later on in the video, but you actually want to have high LDL levels with cholesterol and all that. But as I stated before, this is not the end all be all. I'm not going to be one of those guys that just says, Oh, you have to intermittent fast and then you lose body fat. Okay. I know this isn't going to work for everyone, but it has worked for me. So I'm just putting it out there, but this does lead me into my next point. Eating real food is the best advice I can give you on this topic. And this is very simple to explain. Let's say you want, let's say you're craving orange juice, okay? Go to the store, buy some nice organic oranges and squeeze them yourself, okay? Don't buy Tropicana, Minute Maid, okay? Don't buy these things on the grocery store shelves because they are filled with added sugar and all this bad stuff that has been proven to lead to obesity, heart disease, you name it, okay? Put in the work, I'm telling you it's worth it. I'll talk a lot more about this later. Now let's say you want a coffee, okay? I know everyone's like addicted to coffee, especially here in America. Everyone's like caffeine addicts, okay? So let's say you want a coffee. Now, I would highly recommend that you drink either a black coffee, straight up, okay? Or if you need sweetener, put a heavy cream-based sweetener that's very little to basically no sugar at all instead of going to Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and buying these lattes, these iced coffees that are filled to the brim with added sugars. Okay, I, I did the research on these. I know a medium iced coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, if, it's, if it has all those liquid cane sugars in there and all the creams and stuff, it has upwards of like 40 grams of sugar. So if you're drinking one of those every day, that's probably why you're struggling to lose body fat. Okay, when it comes to the types of meats you're eating, don't buy GMO beef or GMO steak that has been injected with GMOs, you know, genetically modified organisms or hormones. Don't buy that shit, okay? What you want to buy when it comes to meat is grass-fed, okay? It doesn't have to be organic. I do prefer you get organic, 
but just make sure it's grass fed. Mm -hmm. And most lunch meats that you get, and also pretty much all the meats that you're served in any type of restaurant is going to be a lower quality meat. Okay. They do this just to cut costs. Okay. It's a lot cheaper to get lower quality meat. All right. So I stated this in my last video, you're probably going to want to cook most of your meals in your own kitchen and not put the trust of you losing your body fat in, I don't know, a business that's trying to turn over a profit. Now, bread is something that I cut out of my diet a long, long time ago. Okay. And this is because bread, it is very high in calories and it doesn't fill you up. Also, it has literally no nutritional value whatsoever. So I would just stay away from bread. Okay. If you love bread so much, just make sure you get a high quality bread. And it's very hard to get a high quality bread here. The bread here is fortified with things like iron and synthetic antioxidants. Synthetic meaning they're just man-made. And all these things that are added into the bread here in the States has been scientifically proven to cause things like obesity, heart disease, uh, metabolic syndrome, all this crap that you just don't want. And I could talk about bread all day, okay? But the main takeaway here is that there's really no nutritional value to it, so why the hell would you eat it? Okay, now on to junk food, and junk food is absolutely hilarious to me, okay? Because everyone knows it's bad, you know, they all see it in the stores. There's literally usually just like one aisle in any grocery store, and it just has all the bullshit in it. Like, you could just look down at it and be like, oh, there's nothing of nutritional value in there, and that's like every food store here. But it's funny because everyone knows this stuff's bad for you, and they continue to consume it. And you don't have to go very far into dissecting this stuff. You can just look at like, let's say Lucky Charms. Go grab the Lucky Charms box and read the ingredients. So we have whole grain oats, sugar, oat, flour, corn syrup, modified cornstarch, cornstarch, dextrose, salt, gelatin, trisodium phosphate, yellows five and six, red 40, blue one, and other color added. Also, natural and artificial flavor. They just had to put the cherry on top at the end there by saying that. So we have multiple types of food dyes in this product. Now, Red 40 is a known carcinogen, so it causes cancer. That's what carcinogen means. Then we have corn syrup and sugar, which you should know all about corn syrup and sugar. But the main point here is that this is all crap, okay? There's no nutritional value here whatsoever. So why would you eat it? Another junk food that actually disguises itself as a health food is granola. And I know what you're thinking, Kenny, granola is healthy, man. It's, you know, it's rich in fiber. Guess what it's also rich in? Added sugar. It's also super high in calories. And I, I'm pretty sure like one cup of granola, like not even one cup is like actually 500 calories. And I know you're probably thinking, you're like, Kenny, where do I get my fiber from? And I'm gonna say this right now, forget about fiber. It isn't even close to being one of the important nutrients that you need. Plus, it causes gas and bloating. And there have been studies that have shown where people that are eating high amounts of fiber in their diet, they have hormonal problems. And this was very evident in women who were eating diets high and rich in fiber. Now, don't worry. I'm not just going to spew all this crap and not leave sources down below. So there will be sources down below in the description. I'll conclude on the eating real food topic by stating that you need to watch out for the lower quality versions of real food. Like I talked about before, not all meats are equal, okay? A lot of them are injected with hormones, they're GMO, they're modified, they're made in a lab. You wanna stay away from that shit. And this is the same case with pretty much any other food that is actually good for you. A lot of them are made in labs now, and this is just because corporations have gotten very smart, okay? They have found ways to fool you, whether that be through marketing tactics or just lying straight up to your face, okay? They're looking to turn a profit, so just watch out for their sneaky little tricks. Now, believe it or not, but not everyone is actually metabolically healthy. Most people here in America are actually a part of the other side of the crowd, and that is that they suffer from something called metabolic syndrome. Things that can cause this are high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and also unhealthy cholesterol levels. It can even cause a buildup of plaque in your arteries, which can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. So what causes all of these terrible things that you don't want to happen to you? Well, 
consuming bullshit. That's the junk food, the GMO foods, and there is one other thing I like to mention, and that is the type of oils that are used to cook this food in, and those are seed oils or vegetable oils. To start off, seed oils were originally used as machine lubricants back in the late 1800s. It wasn't until 1911 that it was first used as a food oil or a food product. And that was with the release of Crisco, which is short for crystallized cottonseed oil. Now I'm not going to get much into this because I can make like another whole 20 minute video on vegetable oils alone. But the main thing to know here is that America has completely swapped out healthy animal fats with the seed oils, which are omega-6 uh, PUFAs or polyunsaturated fats, where they used to use lard, tallow, things like that. They're now using soybean oil, cottonseed oil, like I stated before, sunflower oil, canola oil. They're using all of these to cook all their foods in and also all the foods that they sell in grocery stores. Ever since America swapped these two things, obesity, heart attacks, heart disease have skyrocketed in America. These seed oils are very high in an omega-6 fatty acid called linoleic acid. Now consuming linoleic acid lowers your LDL levels and a lot of people think this is a good thing because their doctors are always telling them or either the mainstream media is just feeding them with the lie that you want low LDL levels because you know high LDL is the leading cause of heart disease, obesity, but it's not. There's tons of scientific research that shows it is not. So what I'm saying here is that high LDL levels, it should not be a major concern for you unless you are metabolically unhealthy. Let's say you have diabetes or something, then I would look into it a little bit and I would first try to fix the diet that you have because that's probably what first caused you to develop a metabolic syndrome like diabetes. So you need to first change your diet. And what's the best way to do that? eat high quality food. And I know what you're thinking, Kenny, you keep saying this, what does it mean? You know, eat real food. You know, if you have a craving for something sweet, instead of eating a cookie or a donut, drink a glass of 100% orange juice. But Kenny, it's, it's too expensive. I can't pay $10 for a gallon of real orange juice. Well, you know what else is expensive? Hospital stays. Overnight stays at a hospital in the ICU literally cost 40000 a night here in America, okay? That's a lot more expensive than 10 bucks for a gallon of real orange juice. You have a choice here, okay? Spend a little bit more money now to feed yourself high-quality food that will make you feel a million times better than the bullshit you're eating or keep eating the bullshit just because it's a little cheaper and then develop heart disease by the time you're 50, okay? And then pay a bunch of money and hospital bills. It's a choice you have to make. I'm telling you right now, you gotta eat real food. It's gonna help you in the long run. Stop worrying about, oh, it's it's a couple bucks more than the, the cheap one. Like, dude, read the label, look into it. I'm telling you, it's gonna be worth it. The next topic I'm going to be discussing is the counting of calories. Should you do it or is it a complete waste of time? I'm sorry, but counting your calories is probably the best way to make sure that you're going to bed starving, and also unsatisfied. You see most fitness guys on this platform of YouTube and you know Instagram, TikTok, whatever, they'll tell you to eat whatever you want as long as it fits your calories, it fits your macros. That's, where, that's what they're gonna tell you. They're gonna be like, you know what? You can eat all this junk food as long as you're not eating over, let's say 2,500 calories. But you can eat all this junk food, you know? Eat the donut, eat the donut. As long as it fits your macros, bro, just, you're good, eat the donut. Like, are you? serious man there are people out there suffering from chronic illnesses and you're telling them oh you, it's okay you can eat a freaking lucky charms cereal bar as long as it fits your macros and this advice comes from mostly from the bodybuilding community okay they tell you to go on these retarded cutting diets but what they also fail to tell you is that these cutting diets they cause hormonal problems and this is why you see bodybuilders on prep that are eating like 1800 calories a day, 1500 calories a day, their testosterone tanks because their hormones are all messed up. But they don't want to tell you that. They don't want to tell you that that's the cause for their low testosterone. But it's okay. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to count 
any of your calories, okay? All you have to do is eat real food. Kenny, it's, it's not that simple. Stop saying it. No, it is this simple, okay? Like, who would have thought if we just ate the food that nature intended for us to eat instead of man-made, synthetic, highly processed bullshit that we would be a lot healthier? I mean, I mean, who, who would have thought? Now, I'm not just going to tell you to eat real food and then end the video because I know a lot of you have no idea what real food is and it's not your fault. You've been brainwashed by mainstream media, you know, doctors. So you probably have no idea what real food actually is, but I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. First up, we have any type of grass fed beef, steak, chicken, pork, or bacon. Also make sure these are preferably organic, but the main thing here is to buy grass fed. If you love seafood, buy wild caught. Okay. Never buy farm raised. Okay. You can just look up a video of like a little colony of like salmon fish getting fed at a farm raised thing. And it'll be like disgusting to you. Okay. Please look, look up that video. It's hilarious. Next up we have eggs and not any type of egg, but eggs from pasture raised farms, you know, eggs that are actually in the sunlight, you know, they're eating whatever they want. They're in a pasture. Okay. They're not in this like tiny little six by eight inch freaking metal cage inside a factory or like even a barn or whatever, getting tortured and getting fed cheap feed. Make sure you're eating eggs that the chickens actually get in sunlight. Okay. Because then the eggs are going to have some vitamin D in there. You know, the eggs that, that come from hens that are not outside for like their entire existence, there's no vitamin D in there. Okay. That's like the lowest quality egg that you can find out there. So make sure you're getting high quality egg. Next up, we have fruit and fruit juices. Only buy organic fruit because many fruits are genetically modified and sprayed with pesticides. Also, never buy fruit that's out of season. Make sure you're always washing your fruit before you eat it. Now, fruit juices are tricky because most of the ones you find in stores are filled with added sugar. If you can find a 100% orange juice, watermelon juice, or even pomegranate juice, organic versions, of course, you can actually, by consuming these juices, you can actually increase your libido or sex drive by quite a lot, but that's for another video. And the sugar you're going to find in good fruit and fruit juices, it's a hell of a lot different than the processed sugar that you find in all this junk food shit. Next up, we have dairy products. I would recommend getting raw milk if you can get your hands on it. Make sure you're getting this from a trusted source. There's bacteria in raw milk that has been proven to heal things like leaky gut and many other digestion and gut issues. This bacteria is killed in pasteurized milk. So you're pretty much just drinking dead bacteria when you drink pasteurized milk. Now, plants are interesting because many plants that are sold, you know, vegetables and stuff like that, they have a high amount of defense chemicals in them. Now, I don't like plants or vegetables. You know, I get most of the nutrients that you can find in vegetables from red meat and eggs and things like that. So there's actually not really any vegetables in my diet. Now I'm not against vegetables entirely. If you're eating vegetables right now and you are thriving, like you feel awesome, you feel great. Don't stop. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you're eating vegetables and you get very bloated after eating them, you know, you're gassy, you have digestion problems. I would recommend cutting them out. Okay. Because they might be the cause of it because of these, these defense chemicals that are in them. Carbs like potatoes and rice, those aren't terrible either. Just make sure you're getting organic versions of them, you know, high quality versions. I actually enjoy a nice sweet potato from time to time. And that's probably the only vegetable I will eat because potatoes are vegetables or like roots or whatever. But yeah, that's probably the only vegetable. I'll eat. All right. Now I know this segment is going to piss a lot of you off and I don't really care. Okay. But here it goes. Drinking alcohol is making you fat. If you love it so much and you really think you need it just to get through the day, I would highly recommend that you probably go see a psychiatrist. If you do it once in a while, like let's say a few drinks every couple months. Uh, yeah, whatever. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, you just want to enjoy life or whatever for maybe celebratory causes. Yeah, but if you're drinking alcohol every weekend, let's say, it's absolutely going to deteriorate your health 
and make you fat. Now, the last thing I'm going to be discussing is pretty much common sense, and that is that you need to move around, okay? You need to be active, all right? And this doesn't mean that you have to spend all your, the hours of your days in some shitty ass commercial gym, okay? You don't have to go to a commercial gym for like two hours a day just to stay fit, all right? You can literally go run around at a public park. There are public parks all over the place, okay? You can even go run around your neighborhood, okay? Go for like a mile run. Just keep moving, all right? When you wake up, do, I don't know, 200 push-ups supersetted with 200 sit-ups. There's really no excuse to moving around and working up a good sweat, okay? All you need is your body. That's all you need is yourself, all right? Maybe a pair of shoes and clothes, obviously. Don't go running out naked or whatever, but that's all you need, okay? You don't need any equipment to work up a great sweat, and I would recommend doing that probably every single day. All right, guys, this wraps up this video. I hope I've been very informative for you and that you've actually learned something by watching this. And if you enjoyed this video and you love the channel, smash that like button and also that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys sometime next week. Compromise you own, but this is beginning to feel like the dawn.